Aproveitando o break do seu podcast pra perguntar. Será que você sabe... Quem é ele? Esse tá de rock and roll. Trident apresenta um feat de gerações com Rita Lee e Luísa Sonza. Eu procuro estar por dentro, doutor, dessa nova geração. Mas minha filha não me leva a sério, doutor. Ela fica cheia de mistério com esse tal de rock and roll. Quando terminar seu podcast, já aproveita pra ouvir esse feat aqui no Spotify. Trident no Rock in Rio 40 anos. Masca e destrava seu rock and roll. Next up on the Mutual Audio Network, fiction from our future. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Welcome to Chronosphere Fiction. This is your pilot, Daniel French. Once again, taking you on a journey into Generation Zombie. This episode, Death on the Horizon. Written by Stephen Chisholm. Please contribute to Chronosphere Fiction on our Patreon site, patreon.com slash chronosphere, or... On our Podbean site. Just go to Podbean and look for Chronosphere Fiction. Contribute a dollar, it really helps. Buckle in and relax. It's time for Generation Zombie. Death on the Horizon. Dead Zone 6, somewhere between Porterville and Embalmersfield. And why did we have to ditch the four-wheeler? We've been hoofing it for hours. Quit your belly-aching, Schumacher. I'm the only one of us who can feel pain, and you don't see me complaining. At least your cuts will heal. All these brambles tearing at my calves are going to cost me a fortune to repair. Never mind this parting gift from your generous captain. All I'm saying is we'd be in Embalmersfield by now if we hadn't had to dump the four wheeler back in Wakefield. You were there for Lieutenant Ramsey's brief. We were to abandon the ATV at the border between Wakefield and Morningshire. We have to create the illusion that you escaped on foot. It will coincide with the timing with the Portfield invasion. If you truly want to cut our trip short, keep an eye out for the Embalmersfield patrols. Shouldn't be too difficult, what with the evacuation of the surrounding towns. Can't see much beyond these trees. And hard to hear anything over your heavy breathing. That's because your senses aren't as sharp as the living. You keep your body from decomposing, and I'll do everything else. You better be careful about what you say. I've been promised a lofty station by your captain. And when that time comes to pass, you best be sure you're not on my ship. <sighs> How about you focus on what you're going to see in front of Governor Lewin? You act like I haven't been in politics before. I know just what to say. Don't you worry. Damn things. Why are you bothering me? Shh. Are these things not bothering you? You're the one full of blood. Why would they be after me? I said shut up. Someone's coming. Oh, thank goodness. Must be an embalmer's for patrol. Wait here until we're certain that's what it is. If I don't get up to the road now, I could miss them. Besides, what's the worst that can happen? I have two bullet holes to repair instead of one? Schumacher! Mayor! Get back here! Hey! Hey, over here! Ugh! <sighs> Damn fool. You boys from Embalmersfield? Down on the ground. Now. Get down. Down on your knees. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Getting down. Don't you? Are those? He's on dead, Sanchez. Seems so. What are you doing out here? Your kind was evac I... I was... I left. I mean, I escaped from... Wait, wait. Don't shoot. Who's there? Show yourself. 
Come out slowly with your hands raised. It's okay. Corporal Cooper of the LZ-4. I'm dropping my weapon and coming out unarmed. Slowly now. See? No weapon. Sanchez, his uniform. Looks to be telling the truth. So it seems. <clears throat> my apologies, Corporal. Apologies unnecessary. I know you're just doing your job. Uh, thank goodness. Can I get up now? Corporal? He's fine. He's aiding the ULZ. Oh, good to see that all zombies are lost causes. Go on, you can get up now. Phew. Mm. Okay, that's better. What's LZ-11 doing out here? Are you guys joining in the war effort? Oh, it'll be great to hear we have the backing of the consul. Well, uh, Sanchez? I mean, well, he is a superior officer. You do have something to report? Well, we can't give you too much information. We're not fully in the know ourselves, but the consul is planning a coordinated attack on Embalmersfield. We could definitely use the help. I imagine they're a lot better fortified there than in Portville. They'll expect us coming, no doubt. Are you invading from the east? That's the thing, Corporal. We're already there. Where? In Barmersfield. We touched down this morning. They've already launched an attack? No, no, no. Let me explain. We've been sent there to aid in defense against LZ4. But before you react, it's just a ploy. We'll turn on the enemy once your battalion breaches the city limits. We have a secret weapon, Colonel. Uh, Sanchez, don't you think we should, you know, speak out of range of this fella? Who, me? No, I'm hardly listening. Besides, I'd never betray the ULZ. Hmm. Uh, Mayor, perhaps it's best you take a seat in the Humvee. I... Fine. I suppose learning any more about the plan is only going to make lying to Lewin all the more difficult. Okay. Tell me more about the secret weapon. Neither me nor William here know much about it. But it's some sort of biochemical weapon. We didn't want to discuss it in front of your friend there, because, well... Let's just say there won't be a single zombie that makes it out of that city alive. Well, not that they're alive anyway, but I'm sure you understand. You mean every zombie in a bomber's field will be exterminated? Well, from our understanding, there won't be many bullets necessary for this battle. If that's the case, then if Mom and Sam are there... Uh, Corporal? Thank you both for the information. It's encouraging to find we've got brothers in the fight. Rest assured... I'll remain tight-lipped about the plan until its execution. But we really must be on our way, so if you'll excuse us... Mayor! Mayor Schumacher! Break time's over. Time we get a move on. Ah, but I just sat down. Dead Zone 6. Hotel room in Zonal Capital, Embalmersfield. So? What'd you see? As expected... The mayor welcomed them in with open arms. The city is crawling with the LZ-11 troops. It's like Mayor Lewin didn't even consider what we said for a moment. Oh. So if our suspicions are correct, that LZ-11 is intending to aid LZ-4, then we're as good as goners. Well, it's not all bad news. Far from it. Turns out that we're also receiving reinforcements from the 40th Infantry, and rumors are that the 75th Ranger Regiment will also be arriving soon. Even if LZ-11 were to turn on us, we'd have the firepower to defeat them. Well, let's hope it doesn't come to that. I really don't see the ULZ raising arms against its own. So hopefully this comes to a peaceful resolution, especially, especially since George is with them. <laughs> I don't imagine Captain Roberts really cares that he's outnumbered. But if the LZ-11 is here for the right reasons, then maybe he'll hold off on the attack. Let's hope so. I can't even get a lift out of here until all of this is settled. They're not letting any more citizens in or out of the city. <sighs> I just want to get back to DZ-7. I've been calling my dad nonstop, but he's not picking up. Neither he nor my brother. I'm sure he's just busy searching for you. He'll get your messages when he returns home. Yeah... I suppose. Sorry, Nick. I'm sure you'll hear from him soon. And he'll be so happy to hear that you're okay. Yeah, thanks. Maybe a game of rummy will distract you. I think I saw a deck of cards around here somewhere. Yes, I, I, I think I saw them over here. Let's see. Um, uh, here we are. New deck, too. You know, odd as it is, I, I didn't think I'd miss the smell of a new deck of cards. <laughs> yeah, 
You're not missing much. Oh, that startled me. Who could that be? I don't know. Only the governor and her constituents know we're here. Well, are we going to open it? Hello? Christina Hall here. I'm visiting on behalf of Lewin. Yeah, I suppose we should open it. Hello there, Miss Hall. Yes, hello. I hope you're all enjoying your accommodations. Would have been nice to have separate rooms, but it's been cozy enough. Right. I've been sent here to escort Ms. Cooper and her daughter back to City Hall. (laughs) What for? Let her finish, dear. We've had a pair of refugees come in from Porterville. Porterville? Perhaps I should come along. I might know them. Well, uh, I've been instructed to bring in these two. But if you wish to come along, I suppose I can't stop you. That'd be up to City Hall security. What do we have to do with these refugees? Well, uh, funny you should ask. One of them is an LZ4 defector, Miss Cooper. He claims to be your son. Dead Zone 1. Interrogation room in the White House. Margaret, despite our conflicting alliances, I do thank you for coming around. I didn't do it for you, Adams. I understand. But when Mrs. Knox arrives, you'll be sure to relay to her everything you told me. (sighs) Yes, but do tell her to hurry. I don't know how much time we have. Certainly. She should be here any minute now. I apologize. I apologize for my lateness. It took me some time to get this one to finally wake up. She's a bit under the weather. No! Bad Margaret! Why didn't you just come alone? She doesn't need to be here for this. Mrs. Knox, thank you for reporting here. I, we, have some vital and frankly, time-sensitive information for you. Perhaps it's best we set aside our differences for the moment and listen to what Margaret has to say. Yes, I demand some answers. What have you done to my daughter? What's happening to her? As General Adams has likely told you, there was a temperature-controlled container holding a syringe in my quarters. The medicine in the syringe is a product of LZ1, a vaccine of sorts. I... I'm not entirely sure how it works. My role was only to inject Mari with a bi-weekly dose. All I know is that it reverses the effects of zombification. Charlotte, your daughter's now human again. Human? Margaret, we're all humans here. Zombification doesn't strip us of our humanity. You of all should know that. You're one of us. Mrs. Knox, you should allow her to continue. (sighs) Go on. Look at the color in her cheeks, Charlotte. Your little girl is going to eventually turn into a woman. She's going to finally have autonomy over her life. This is a miracle, Charlotte. I've given Mari her life back. I only wish she'd see what I do. Margaret, as you stated yourself, time is of the essence. Please, tell her what you told me. Of course, General. I've been stressed the importance of administering these vaccinations not only to maintain the re-life process, but also to... Charlotte, I'm only doing this for the sake of Mari. I truly do care for her. But without the vaccine, Mari doesn't have long to live. And I don't just mean to return to unlife. Mari is no longer going to be with us. Mrs. Knox, please, this is not the time. You're scaring Marie. (laughs) You sick monster! You knew this would happen, didn't you? I swear to you, Charlotte, I knew nothing of it until after the first dose. Adams, get your hands off me! (laughs) Believe me, my intentions were purely selfless. I only wished to see her grow. You must understand the torment she'd endure remaining an infant for eternity. Surely you can't be so selfish. All that matters is that she has a mother and father who love her dearly. In an attempt to give her life, you've jeopardized it. You've jeopardized everything, Margaret. Please listen to me. I only have one remaining dose. You have to administer it immediately. I don't know how long Mari has left without it. Beyond that, 
I'm sorry, but you'll have to turn to the ULZ for help. You really are sick, you know that? After how we've treated you all this time, you go and betray us? You go and betray a helpless little girl to fulfill your twisted fantasy? We treated you like family. She has more to say, Mrs. Knox. I don't know how much more I can hear before dragging her from this room and burying her beneath the prison. Please, Mrs. Knox, I know how you are feeling, but this is a matter of national security. Spit it out, then. My liaison. The man who delivered me the vaccine. Danton. Well, yes. His loyalty is tied to the ULZ. I guess you were right to doubt him, General. Damn it! I knew something was off about my husband's correspondence. How could I have ignored my suspicions? Those snakes in the ULZ are holding my husband captive. We need to inform Congress, madam. This is an act of war. What we need to do is speak to Danton. Madam? Withdraw Danton from LZ-1 immediately. I don't understand, Mrs. Knox. Call him back here now. You heard, Margaret. If I don't get these vaccines, my daughter will die. Mommy? My family's well-being is the utmost priority. I want you to drag Danton back here if you need to, but I will not be gambling with the life of my daughter and husband. War can wait. Living Zone 1, a crisis room in the Consular Palace. You... you wanted to see me, your consulship? Take a seat, Danton. General Wilkes and I were just discussing our battle plans. How goes the preparation? We have more than enough canisters to flood Embalmer's field. Couldn't have gone any better. Especially with the evacuation of the surrounding towns pushing up Captain Robert's arrival time. He should reach the border by sundown tomorrow. A messenger is on standby and will inform the captain of the plan. Great news. We may even expect a formal surrender of the UDZ on the day of the centenary. How poetic would that be? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. The reason these zombies choose unlife is because they were so unwilling to give in to the concept of death. They're stubborn creatures. Uh... Yes, of course. What we need is some further leverage. While I trust the might of our military, countless lives will be lost. The Council believes that there's a way we might assuage these numbers, and I'm willing to pursue any avenues that will protect our people. Is that so? Is it something I can do? It appears that you've been summoned by the White House, Danton. I'm sorry? You're to return to your station in the UDZ. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. As Dr. Megan declared last session, I've lost contact with Margaret. I suspect they may have uncovered our plan. Oh, they undoubtedly know about you by now. I'm sure of it. And yet, you're asking me to report back to the White House. What has convinced Knox to cooperate with us, Danton? The safety of his daughter, Consul, but I don't see how... And what good does his daughter do us dead? None. With Margaret no longer administering the vaccines, how are we to verify the safety of little Marie? We can send them doses of the vaccines. If Knox refuses to comply, we could withhold the doses until he does. And risk the UDZ uncovering the formula? No, Danton. You know better than to believe that plan will work. I think you know why you have to return to the White House. I... Yes, I think I know why. Then let me hear you say it. And you're sure there's no other way? Danton, why am I having you return to the White House? <sighs> I'll answer my summons to return to the White House. And I will return here with the child. Very good, Danton. Now, General Wilkes here will arrange your flight back. In the meantime, go and practice your pitch. I doubt Mrs. Knox will make her decision lightly. 
Of course, your consulship. Living Zone 1. The halls beneath the consular palace. We need to hurry. That guard will likely be up any minute. And then it'll be a whole lot more difficult to get out of here. You act like I'm a regular around here. All the hallways look the damn same. <sighs> Would it kill them to put up some signs? How does anyone find the way around here? Look, we haven't tried this hallway yet. Wait, 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 hold up! What? What you see? Oh. Yeah. Got ahead. Get the rifle ready. Get the rifle re- What do you expect me to do? Shoot the guy? No, no, just- Just in case he hears us. Just- Just have it ready. Well, luckily for us, it seems he didn't hear- Hinton, is that you? Shit. But I have another 20 to go on my shift. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to be relieved early if you're ready to take over. What do we do? Hope you brought some earplugs, cause old crusty cadaver back there is extra chatty today. Back up, Doctor. Hinton? That you around the corner? Freeze! Hand, hands up! Don't you dare move! Whoa, what the hell's going on here? Who are you- Shh, just shut up. How many of you are there up ahead? It's just me. What are you doing, Hobbs? And no one else? That's what I said, isn't it? Good. Now slowly lift the sling over your head and hand your rifle to my cohort here. Hobbs, you know I'm no good with guns. Well then, Doctor, luckily you have me. Now you, do as I said and hand your gun over to my friend. And do it slowly. If I see a finger so much as creep toward that trigger, I'll shoot you. Okay, okay. I'm handing it over now. See? I'm just gonna lift the strap over my head here and... Mm -hmm. There. The safety's on. No need for any more trouble. Dr. Schneider, take the gun. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to grab it by the strap here. The, the safety's on, right? You, uh, you said the safety's on. It, it, it shouldn't go off, right? You're fine, Doctor. I'll take care of our hostage here. You just sling that over your shoulder and follow behind me. Shouldn't we be asking him how to get out of here? Aren't you the least bit curious who they got hold up back there? No one of any importance, I can assure you. See, that just makes me want to find out more. Besides, Doctor, we could use the manpower, especially if he's one of us. One of us? Lead the way, sir. Yeah, I don't think that's a good idea. Who's the one with the gun, eh? Hm? I think you should listen to my friend here. From what he's told me, he's quite the marksman. Ah, uh, fine. Follow me, then. Move a little faster, if you will. Your friend's due to arrive in 20, if I heard you correctly. Mm-hmm. There. Hurry and open the door. Okay, I'm reaching for my keys now. I'd appreciate it if you didn't shoot me. You have my word. Never thought I'd say this. But you got visitors, Stiff. Visitors of your own kind. Uh, huh? Who's... Who's there? Wait a minute. Is that really... President Knox? They must know by now that something's wrong, that I'm in trouble. President? You a friend of mine? What are you talking about? Who are you guys? Your cast of characters. Scene one. Mayor Schumacher is Scott Slagle. George Cooper is J. Dean Garcia. LZ-11 Private Number 1 and LZ-11 Private Number 2 were voice acted by Andrea Richardson. Scene 2. Samantha Cooper is played by Victoria Fonsky. Sheriff Dietz is Daniel French. Christina Hall is Anne Greist. Nick Hobbs is played by Joe Brillian. And Susan Cooper, Samantha's mom, is Nina Bricko. Scene 3. Charlotte Knox is voice acted by Ilana Labarine. Marie Knox is voice acted by Caitlin Curtis. General Adams is Rich Green. Margaret, Marie's nanny, was voice acted by Pauline Herman. Scene 4. 
console Nathaniel is Blake Benlin. Benjamin Danton is voice acted by Spencer J. Frederick. General Wilkes is played by Van Riker. Scene 5. Henry Hobbs is played by Pete Lutz. Dr. Schneider is voice acted by Spencer J. Frederick. President Knox is Van Riker. And the Jailer is Daniel French. This episode of Generation Z was written by Stephen Chisholm, who also writes Corporate Punishment. Production, editing, mixing, sound design, music, and mastering is by Daniel French at Fishbonius Sound Design. Thank you for joining me on the Chronosphere. This is your pilot, Daniel French, once again reminding you, keep your cosmos clean. Do you like thrillers, action, adventure, mystery, crime drama? Well, you're in luck, because here on the Mutual Audio Network, we have Thursday Thrillers. You can subscribe and have a dose of adrenaline-pumping audio every Thursday from your favorite podcast player. Get it here now. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.